I'm Emily Boo, the Horrorcon UK for Slime House TV. Slime House TV here at Horrorcon UK, just here with the one and only Emily Booth. Are you enjoying the con so far? It's been an amazing con so far. I've been so impressed with the atmosphere and the guests and there's just been a lot going on. It's not been a typical convention where it's just signing or just like, you know, sifting through loads of old DVDs, like, which is fine. But this has had like, I don't know, there's been so, so much going on. It's got a real element of fun to it and everyone's super friendly and yeah, I've had a blast. With me being an interviewer, I get I interview a lot of people, but I don't often interview another interviewer. Uh, so. I know, you're good. <laughs> well, we don't know yet. We've only yeah, done one let's question. Find let's find out. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to ask you is, because you've done Out There and you've done uh, Horror Bites and all that kind of stuff, what's like one of the craziest interviews you did? I know you've done Trauma and Jim Van Beber and all these people. Do you, know? you research me. Did I research everyone. I'm a... Yeah. Well, and the rest. And the rest, I yeah. know, I know, it's a bit embarrassing. So yeah, just, if you've got any like memorable interviews that you did where you were like, wow. Yes, I think, yeah, there's one that's a little bit dodgy. Uh, I did a TV show, uh, another cult movie show called Shock Movie Massacre, and that was on Bravo. And uh, the whole kind of point of that was that it wasn't just interviews. We had to kind of like, <sighs> bring the interview to life, so to speak, depending on what they were famous for. So I did Jess Franco, who is a crazy Italian man. I think he's yeah. finally died very, I think he's dead, I'm not sure. Finally. <laughs> did that sound all, did I say finally? I mean, he just got to a very healthy, ripe old age. Anyway, so I did an interview with Jess Franco where, uh, and he's on a load of crazy um, Spanish horror, sleazy horror films, uh, where while we were interviewing, I, we had to get Barbie dolls and make the Barbie dolls kind of have sex, as you do, while we're chatting. And then we had to kill them, we had to murder the Barbie dolls, because he did a film called To Kill the Barbies. So that was really odd. Um, and Tinto Brass, I don't know if you've heard, he's a really renowned um, Italian director who did a film called Salon Kitty and Caligula. He's really renowned for having a very strict protocol for his actresses. Really odd, like you, he doesn't like them to shave their armpits. So you have to be hairy. He makes all his actresses do the coin test. He'll chuck a coin on the floor and he asks you to walk over, bend over and pick it up and mm. give it to him. So I had to do all of these um, tests <laughs> for Tinto Brass during the interview. And the interview, we had like a table like this. And throughout the whole interview, he's just doing this. <laughs> mm. Yeah. This is probably one I'll remember then when people ask me what it you puts memorable you off. interviews. It puts you off though. <laughs> no, I can it puts you off someone's doing that and like you're trying to ask questions okay. So uh, um, uh, yeah, so it's a bit unprofessional really. So I wouldn't do it for real. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, uh, so you also do a lot of acting. I'm good friends with the guys, Life Creations, that did all the effects for uh, Evil Aliens okay. and stuff. Yeah. So just like, yeah, a little bit about your acting career. What is it that got you into wanting to do that? Oh, um, I don't know if it, it wasn't really me that pushed it. I, I just did a film called Pervarella when I was still a uh, uni student. So I went to Goldsmiths and I just did an audition and that's where I met Alex Shandon. And it's you know what this industry is like. I think if you are kind of good at what you do but it's not just about being good at what you do you've got to be brilliant to work with fun reliable part of the team and I don't know I just ended up getting a very good working relationship with Alex Shandon and, and various other people so after Perverella he did Cradle of Fear um, and then I met Jake West through the scene and then I did Evil Aliens and a bit of Doghouse and Inbred and it all just I guess you just sort of get known for certain things but I haven't ever done the I probably should have done, but I never did the whole, let's get a proper agent, let's get my headshots, let's, I, you know, I didn't really go down that route of endless auditions and things. It's more, um, it's not just who you know, you know, they've got to want you to, to be in it, but it, I think it certainly helps in the UK. It's done all right for you, you've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, when you think about Scream Queens in America, you know, the scene in America, there's, you know, they're doing like two or three films a year, it's a bit slower, I think, in the UK, but there you go. Have you got any advice for anyone else, actors or actresses, that would like to get into this kind of career? Yeah, you do, you do have to develop a bit of a thick skin. I think in my 20s, when I got various knockbacks, I do I did have an agent, um, but it was more for presenting, because I've done a lot of TV presenting, probably more presenting than acting, so I had a presenter agent. Um, and so, yeah, you're always getting knockbacks, and I was always in tears, I think. And then I just, I don't know, something clicked and I just sort of got over it. 
Um, I think these days it's a bit different because of social media. It does probably help if you really push yourself on social media without annoying, without becoming annoying. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. a fine line <laughs> between being brilliant at social media and then just pushing too many of the wrong buttons. Um, get yourself a showreel, try and get yourself an agent. Um, and yeah, just, just sort of be really, really, be really good at what you do and, and chat to people. And, and there are people out there who are scoring little roles in films or they're scoring that makeup artist job they wanted because they're kind of putting themselves out there and albeit for free, you often have to work for free at first. And then hopefully you get, you know, asked to do it for money, which is I guess what everyone ultimately wants. I look forward to defiling your corpse. <laughs> So moving on from acting now, you've, you've done a little bit of filmmaking, do you want to just tell us a bit about yeah. that? Yeah, I think, so, oh, I, don't, I don't know why, one day I just woke up and I was like, I should just make my own film, why the fuck should I just do my own movie, just saw, sorry. Why the fuck not, make your own <laughs> fucking movie? Yeah, and I just thought, the thing is, I'm, I'm always like you, I'm interviewing people all the time about their short films or their feature films, and, and I really admired them, I was like, they got off their asses and they just did it, they just decided to do it, and I was like, do you know what, I could do that, maybe I should try. Um, so I just came up with this um, story, which was a myth that I've always been interested in. It's a Celtic myth called the Selkie. Um, I funded it on Kickstarter. So there's loads of interesting yeah. ways now of getting yourself known. Here's another tip for acting. If you really believe in yourself, but you aren't getting hired, make your own movie and put yourself in it. That's what I did. Did you? Yeah. Is that, did that work? Well, the film's out at Christmas, so hopefully. Really? It took five years to make. Oh, good for you. Good for you, seriously. So you, there are, I think it's a bit possibly easier now because there's other ways in and it's a bit more empowering because you can, as I say, use things like Kickstarter. So I did that for Selkie and I wrote it, produced it. My brother is behind the camera and directing and I did sort of everything else. But it's just a short film. It's my love letter to Hastings, where I live. So let me just ask you a bit about that because my sister was just at the door. She's a filmmaker as well and I've shot all her film and that's oh, right. a good like little working relationship. Yeah. How do you find it, what it's like working with your brother? I love, well, I've got to say, I think my initial love of horror probably comes from my brother. He's about five years older than me. And I, I remember he would be about, uh, let's say, 14, 15, so I was like 9, 10, 11 kind of age, going down to the video store and getting out video nasties behind our parents' back. So really, that's where the love of horror came from. So we are quite bonded with horror and we're really open together. I, think, I mean, he's gay anyway, so it, it does help to do, because, yeah, I'm kind of new. I'm not gay. That doesn't, yeah, you don't have to be gay. <laughs> but I, I mean, There's I, nothing wrong with being gay, I'm just not gay. I'm like fully nude at one point in Selkie, and, but it just didn't bother me with Simon. We're, we, we're so comfortable with each other. But I mean, you know, Dario Argento, he directs his daughter, Aja. Let's not even get started on Argento and Asia. Yeah, I mean, that's a slightly contentious one, mm -hmm. but um, for some people it, it, it just works, and if it works, then it's good. No worries, Wally, you've been wicked. It's been great good to have you here, and we hope that you come back. Thank you, I'm a big I'd fan, and it's to. wicked to meet you. Slimehouse TV with Emily Booth at Horrorcon UK. Yeah.